and the guy was testing his heart, and they could see that this guy was having a heart attack while he was doing the trial. Because a lot of heart attacks, you don't actually know you're having it. So they actually called him and said, hey, go to the hospital right now, you're actually having a heart attack. Uh, and now we can do this kind of, you know, so now the model is that you can buy this device and if you pay $10, I think you can get a professional cardiologist to actually read your ECG. So you don't have to make an appointment to go to see a doctor or anything. So that's why initially there was a lot of, a lot of reluctance. Then, you know, obviously the medical profession wasn't very happy. They were <coughs> to buy one of this previously, even though it's an Australian product, you had to see an Australian American doctor and get a prescription. Now, it's, now, now they have released it, so, uh, you know, FDA has allowed it to be sold anyway. So another example of mobile phones, right? I mean, you know, this guy is running a call center, and uh, this this this, uh, this Maasai warrior of a smartphone has got access to more information than Bill Clinton did when he was the president of the United States, and that's how you know technology like this, exponential technology like this, can actually disrupt and level the whole playing field. Uh, I'll give an example of the entrepreneurial guy an idea, right? So this this guy, a mobile phone first came to his village, yeah, I think in Africa. He found that only in this tree top can you actually receive signal for the phone. So he charged five shillings for everybody who wasn't having a phone call. And now he lives in this house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and mobile phone has run from 2% to over 85% now, I think, in, in Africa. Right? So it's a huge, tremendous growth. Right? What does that mean? What does that mean is that a level of playing field? Because for those of us, you know, you guys won't remember it, but when video recorders first came out like $3,000, Video camera like two thousand dollars, GPS like two hundred seventy nine thousand dollars. So they get all this stuff dematerialized, right? It's all gone, right? Into the into an app in your phone, and this is what the Africans have, right? This is what the Indians have. This is what the rest of the world, developing world, has. They can develop entire software apps and stuff like that on a phone. Uh, so that's kind of level the playing field, right? I mean, this is a this is a Radio Shack is like Dick Smith, and these are guys. Um, as you can see, uh, everything in here is gone, right? Except for the uh, various tech that are in the but everything else is all in your phone. The recorder, you know. So you don't need to manufacture this anymore. It's all software, it's an app. So you guys know a couple of exponential curves, right? So you guys sort of more slow, like how computer power doubles every 18 months, miniaturizes by 18 months, faster, you know, by 18 months. Um, what about big data, right? From the start of time, right? That's from the beginning of time, from the first cave, cave wall, you know, the cave paintings, cave wall paintings. Till 2003, we humans as a whole generated five exabytes of data, five billion gigabytes of data. That's every piece of music that Mozart wrote, you know, every book ever written. Um, that's how much data they produced. How long do you think we generated more data? How long did it take to generate more data in 2013? Two days. Two days. It was close. Anybody else? How long? Sorry. How about? Okay. Look at your cameras, right? You've gone from, you know, like, well, I don't remember, one megapixel, now you have like 40 megapixels on uh, Nokia phones, um, and the US drones, uh, the, uh, record, the recon drones in Afghanistan have got like 55 gigapixels, right? And your MRI scans, quality has gone up, and YouTube, right, is uploading like over 100 hours of video content. It's all data. So, and the other thing is obviously cost of sequencing your gene has fallen faster than Moore's law, right? Like I said, you know, it, uh, <coughs> I think it costs less than a thousand dollars today, mm -hmm. and by 2020, it'll be cheaper to flush your daughter than to sequence your gene. But what's the big deal for sequencing your gene? The Human Genome Project that you guys heard about? Well, it's a big deal because it will shake up the whole pharmaceutical industry. You see, the problem with the health system we have right now is that nobody makes money if you're healthy, right? Only when you're sick to make money, right? So the incentive is kind of screwed up. That's why I'm trying to change that in the telehealth project I'm working on. I don't know whether you guys know about the, Chin the Chinese village doctor model. In the old days in China, you have a village doctor that takes care of the people in the village. And everybody has to pay the doctor every morning, unless you're sick. If you're sick, you don't pay. Then the doctor has to go in and see, like, why are you not paying me? Don't die, okay? Because then you won't be paying me. And unfortunately, we don't have this system now, right? It's only when you get sick that you actually you spend most of your wealth at the, towards the end of your life. So. In the pharmaceutical industry right now, right, to, to make new drugs, they actually call it drug discovery. They don't call it drug development because they have no idea how it actually works. Okay, I mean, look at the acetonitil, right, Viagra. It was actually meant to be a high pressure medication. It was, they were going to trial the drugs. They gave it out to all the women and men to test it. 
while they were in the process of doing a drug trial, they suddenly decided that it was too expensive, there were too many competitors out there, it wasn't going to be worth it. So they recalled the trials. All the women gave it back, none of the men did. <laughs> and a whole new market opened up for them, right? Direct health dysfunction. Which leads us to this area called pharmaceutical economics. You and I are given drugs that are tested on a small population in the Western world, and everybody gets the same drug. That's not the right thing, right? Because the thing is that you and I may have genes that react badly, like biops, right? You might actually die from it, actually, uh, in a severe case. So, and we all take the same dose, which is actually wrong. So what's happening now by sequencing your genes, and not only your genes, not only their DNA, not only genomics, they're sequencing proteins that form your genes, they're sequencing the bacteria, right, which is known as microbiome. And basically by doing that, you can understand how to solve the problem that, uh, you know, that, that uh, the issues that you have in terms of uh, your health. So the other area is epigenetic, like how does the environment impact your health? Um, you know, like when you get sick, often the doctor will ask you, like, where have you been? What have you been exposed to? Because the gene gets triggered on, and you get cancer suddenly, and you don't even know why. Then how do you turn it back off? So there's a company in Queensland called Fit Genes uh, doing some work in this area. A few other companies in Singularity do uh, are working on this area. In the area of energy, I mean, you guys know, right? I mean, the cost of energy distribution is high because of energy production, right? You can produce energy for almost like less than five cents now, but the distribution cost is very expensive. Uh, storage is a problem, but Rice University, this is a project from Rice University, they have made a lithium ion battery from five coat of paint that you can paint inside your house. So in future you can have a, you already have solar paint, you can paint it outside to charge it, and then inside your house you have this five, five layer paint to basically charge it up. Um, and this is a Los Alamitos lab, they are working on a national ignition facility, they are looking at how to concentrate 196 laser beam onto a single hydrogen atom, firing onto it, and creating cold fusion, the power of the sun. And we already managed to achieve equivalent power. I mean, it's not producing more than it's produced, uh, than, than it put in, but the same amount of power that you get out of as you put in. So we're still working on that. The other big area that's gonna come is synthesis biology, right? Programming your genes. This is my classmate, uh, Pablo Solomon from Paraguay, from Uruguay. And we're having a speed party, we're fitting into a test tube. <coughs> uh, a company called 23 and Me, and basically they sequence your genes and tell you like your health traits and test and so on. Uh, it costs like 99 dollars to do it. It's free for us if you're doing it there. Unfortunately, if you do it now, the American FDA has prevented the health results to be given to you in case you, are, you, you get too smart and not see a doctor and do something drastic. For example, you know you're afraid that if women find out they have fatal one gene, they have the breast removed and you know they didn't want that to happen. That was the reason that they came for banning the health results. Before you do this test too, I've got to warn you, right? A lot of divorces that happen after this. Suddenly you find out that your mother is not your mother, your dad is not your dad, and you know, suddenly you have like 55 brothers around the world. Um, so you can actually, you can actually it's, it's, it's never like a social media network that can actually relatively find that. So you can find out how close you are matching to your relatives. Um, so this is my personal result I'm sharing with you. So I have a higher risk of atrial fibrillation of the heart, I have a higher risk of macular defect of the eye, so I know that I should get more regular eye checkup, for example. Um, and you know most Asians, particularly the Japanese, I mean, when they drink alcohol, they turn red? Yeah, I don't have that. Jeez, I'm not, I'm not red. No, I didn't drink them. Anyway. <laughs> Even if I did, you wouldn't know. Um, you know, and it tells you, like, you know, how, you, how the medication affects you, you know, and so forth. And this, the things that, like, the doctors don't even bother asking you or checking up on you. It's a really interesting stuff that, uh, that's developing. And this is interesting data like for ancestry. So my 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 grandfather from my father's side came from Hainan Island, the small island on the coast of China. So nothing really interesting, right? I'm related to people are from Siberia down to you know New Zealand. Okay. But my mother's side, the family is from Fuzhou, uh, from Fuzhou, right? Which is southern part of China. But look at this. I'm highly correlated to many American Indians, the Incans, the Mayans, the Aztecs, and so on. So I'm going back to the U.S. to play some Indian reservation land, open a casino, and you guys are calling me Jesus in Ten. So this is a company that changed the name of the biocompiler in Singularity. It's out of PhD work from Stanford, uh, from my friend Omri. He is basically writing a compiler to compile genes. <coughs> so programming your genes, believe it or not, if you're learning, you know, if, if, if no other skill that you want to learn, pick up a programming skill. Because programming your gene is exactly like computer programming. Except instead of zero and ones, it is base four ATCG. You program it, you do exactly the same thing. Okay, so you want to grow a new nose, you want to be a total blonde, you can, 
and I'll show you how to make your cat grow in the dark. So let's say you make your cat grow in the dark. How would you do it? You go to this company, complete economics. Take your ducks, uh, take your take your cats, take a sock of your cats, uh, you know, saliva or uh, you know, cheap cells. Send it to them. Two thousand dollars, two or three days. Send it to a chip you know, or hard drive with all the data. Load it onto your computer. Go to DNA team. By the way, complete economics is now owned by the world largest gene sequencing company, the Beijing Genomics Institute, BGI. Right. The, the Chinese are sequencing everything. Right. Not just human genes. Anything that tastes good. That's <laughs> 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 uh, no, true. So anyway, uh, uh, they go to this company DNA 2.0. Download the software called the Gene Designer 2.0, and then you know you got the gene from your cat. But how do you make it glow in the dark? Well, the good news to you is there's a lot of free open database right now. There's Open DNA, and which you can get from US, and there's a European one too. They already sequence the genes of the jellyfish, for example, the glow in the dark gene of the jellyfish. So you can use that, download it, splice it, arrange it any way you want until you're happy. Send it back to DNA 2.0, right? They'll send you then the DNA material of what you created, and you can inject into your cat and press it. <laughs> but obviously, you know, there are some of you that don't like green, so you can make it red. So this is already happening. And then my classmate, I figured that already, he had the fastest Kickstarter funded project two years ago. He created this, a glow in plant. So when I gave this talk at Urban, they were telling me like, oh, you know, they're going to be public, and you know, they're going to be uh, privatized soon, and they're going to be competing, and they're having all these issues. I said, mate, that's a little bit of a problem, right? If my friend succeeds in this, can you imagine? Like the solar panels are working at night, and all they need, the tree, all they need is fertilizer, water, and, and uh, carbon dioxide, right? And you will have a glow and dark tree. You don't really need lamppost. And this is uh, Andrew Hassel, the faculty head of genomics and singularity, and he talks about how the virus is nothing more than a software in the future. It's an app, right? If you want to, like I said, grow a new nose, or grow a new arm, 